From the last two lessons, we've learnt that the aggregate demand curve is downward sloping and that certain factors like an interest rate cut or increase in consumer wealth increases aggregate demand, shifting the curve to the right. We also learnt that the long-run aggregate supply curve of an economy is vertical at the potential level of the GDP, in which the economy is at full employment and physical capital are all operating at 100% utilisation. The short-run aggregate supply curve is upward sloping. Certain factors like a change in input prices only affect the SRAS, while factors that affect the resource capacity or productivity of the economy will affect both the SRAS and LRAS. In this lesson, we examine the effects of the shifts in the AD and SRAS curves on real GDP and the business cycle. Before that, let's start with the long-run equilibrium of the economy. When all three curves intersect at the same point, the economy is said to be in long-run full employment equilibrium. This is the point where the economy is producing at its full potential, where there is no unemployment and all physical capital are operating at full capacity. In reality, economies rarely operate at potential GDP. Various factors cause the curves to shift, creating temporary gaps in output. We shall discuss four types of fluctuations and the corresponding effects on the economy. When the aggregate demand decreases and increases, and when the short-run aggregate supply decreases and increases. For our first case, factors like high interest rates, the stock market crash, or a strong currency can cause aggregate demand to lower, shifting the curve to the left. In the short run, the economy produces less at a lower price level. This new short-run equilibrium output is less than full employment GDP, which means there is high unemployment in the economy. We call this a recession gap, where GDP and price levels decline in the short run. Classical economists believe that nothing needs to be done to remedy this. They believe that unemployment would drive wages down, which in turn would increase SRAS and return the economy to its full employment level of real GDP, but at an even lower price level. Keynesian economists, on the other hand, feel that this is a long and economically painful process. They feel that action should be taken to stimulate aggregate demand through expansionary fiscal and monetary policy. Such actions can help to return real GDP to its full employment level and restore prices back to the level before the recession. A second case to consider is an increase in aggregate demand due to factors like loose monetary policy or a real estate boom. This results in higher prices and a level of GDP greater than full employment GDP in the short run. We call this an inflationary gap. The economy can operate at this level in the short run as workers work overtime and maintenance of productive equipment is delayed. However, this is unsustainable in the long run. This is because wages and input prices increase under intense competition, thus increasing costs of production, shifting the SRAS curve to the left. So in the long run, the economy goes back to full employment GDP, but at a price level that is higher than before. This is undesirable as price levels go up without any increase in real output. If left unchecked, this can result in an inflationary loop where prices keep going up. To prevent this from happening, policymakers should adopt contractionary fiscal and monetary policies by decreasing government spending, increasing taxes, or slowing the growth rate of the money supply through higher interest rates. This moves the economy back to the initial long-run equilibrium at full employment GDP without any increase in price. Our third and fourth cases have to do with shifts in short-run aggregate supply, which are often due to changes in input prices like wages or energy prices. For example, a sudden increase in energy prices increases the cost of production for many firms, pushing the SRAS curve to the left. 
The result of this is a lower GDP at a higher overall price level for goods and services in the short run. This combination of declining economic output and higher prices is termed stagflation, which can be a policymaker's nightmare. Firstly, most economies are net importers of energy, so there's little that can be done to moderate energy prices. To resolve this problem, policymakers can take actions to stimulate aggregate demand to restore full employment. However, this is not ideal as the price level ends up even higher. Conversely, policymakers can choose to fight inflation by decreasing aggregate demand. This is not ideal either, as GDP is reduced further. What the policymakers can hope for is to do nothing and wait for wages to come down due to high unemployment, such that the costs of production are lowered and the SRAS shifts back to the right, where price and GDP go back to their previous levels. However, this may be political suicide for the government as high unemployment and lower wages are the one-way ticket to get voted out at the next elections. Our final case to consider is an increase in SRAS due to a decrease in the price of important productive inputs. This results in a new short-run equilibrium where the GDP is greater than full employment GDP and the price level is lower. The situation may eventually correct itself where the tight labour market pushes wages up, increasing production costs, shifting SRAS back to its original equilibrium. More often than not, both the aggregate demand and aggregate supply fluctuate simultaneously in the short run. If both AD and SRAS increase, real GDP increases, but the price level can be up or down depending on the relative magnitude of the movements. If both AD and SRAS decrease, real GDP decreases, and similarly, the price level can be up or down depending on the relative magnitude of the movements. If AD increases and SRAS decreases, the price level will increase, but the real GDP can increase or decrease depending on the relative magnitude of the movements. And if AD decreases and SRAS increases, the price level will decrease, but the real GDP can increase or decrease depending on the relative magnitude of the movements. You're watching an excerpt from our comprehensive animation library. For more videos like these, head on down to prepnuggets.com. At Prep Nuggets, let us do the hard work for you.